Hello, welcome back to the Cubase Fundamentals course. We're in the process of writing a song uh, called Project One and learning Cubase as we go. Now, every one of these episodes gets uploaded to my Patreon site. So if you want to check out the link below, you'll be able to follow along with the course uh, episode by episode, and you'll be helping to support the channel. Now, there's quite a few things about this project that are annoying me now, and I want to tidy up. As we've been dealing with lots of different subjects, we've kind of thrown the kitchen sink at this, and I want to pull some of that stuff back out so that we've got a little bit more of a clean project. And what I'm particularly referring to is some of these effects and the panning, the stuff that's been done to this track, these tracks that we really don't need when we're writing a song. I don't want to solo a guitar line and only hear it in one ear. It does help to make the guitar sound better when they're panned, but when you're writing a song, you don't really need that stuff. And one of the cool little tricks that we can learn um, in order to make navigating around the console more easier, this is the mixing console is a quick link. And what happens when we engage this is that any operation that we perform on any selected track will be performed on all of those selected tracks. And the first thing that I want to do is reset all of my pan settings to central. I've got this track here panned pretty hard right, one panned pretty hard left. And there's no really easy way to reset all of my tracks to center, but it can be done using quick link. The first step in the trick is to select all of our tracks. So I'm going to select the top track, then I'm going to press the shift key and select the bottom track. And now you can see all of my tracks are selected. Now, even though I've been opening the mix console to get this pop-up window, we can also access uh, these features from the, the bottom strip, but you need to access the little ellipsis here, show or hide mix console toolbar, press that, and then all your buttons come back. If they ever disappear, and they do sometimes, you inadvertently turn them off and you've, you've forgotten where they all are. That's how to get them back. And here we can see quick link. Basically every track that I have selected is going to respond to any operation I perform on the mixer. Now the problem with resetting all of my pan settings to central, I'll demonstrate what the issue is. If I double click on this left panned channel and type C and then hit enter, watch what happens to R50 it's been set to hard right. Can you see all hell's broken loose? I don't actually have anything that I wanted. That's because currently the mixer is in relative mode. In other words, any operation I perform on any one channel strip moves all of the other channel strips by an equivalent amount. Well, I don't want that. I actually want to set them all absolutely to center. So if I click the absolute button and then do the same thing, I can pick any of these. It really doesn't matter which one. C, enter, and now everything is set to C. Just bear in mind that while you're in absolute mode, all channel strip controls will uh, will respond absolutely. So if I pick this volume control up, they all suddenly snap to the same volume. So just be careful because this absolute mode is brutal. And what's worse, this isn't recorded in the history. So I've just lost all of my volume controls. If something horrible goes wrong like that, the best thing to do is revert. And we'll just get our project back uh, the way it was when we started. So let's do that again into the mix console. Ensure that quick link is on, absolute is on. Select the top track, bottom track, choose any pan, C. And then even though I selected one that was already center, it doesn't matter. It set the entire thing to C. While I'm here, I'm going to do another um, common option as well. I'm actually going to take the vintage compressor off both of these tracks. While Quick Link is on, we don't need absolute mode anymore. I can turn that off. Quick Link is the important thing. Any operation I perform on an insert track will perform the same operation on all linked tracks. So I'm just going to select these two. Set insert one to no effect, and it throws them both away at the same time. So Q-Link is really cool for performing operations on multiple tracks simultaneously. While these two things are linked and we're no longer in absolute mode, I can adjust their volumes and you can see that the two sliders move relatively. I'll leave the chorus on because that wasn't offending me. Okay, let's talk about what the challenge of today is. I want to double the length of the track by creating a new eight bars of rhythm. And I want to replicate the two guitar lines. Now that's quite tricky 
because the guitar lines aren't exactly eight bars long. We have these little bits of overhang that the, the events start slightly before the bar. And in this particular case, it extends quite a long way past the bar. So we're gonna to have to worry about that. If I simply selected one of these events and clicked duplicate, you see that it's literally just tagged the two events together. And now this second event is out of time. So it's not quite that simple. What we're going to have to do is trim these events down to make them exactly the right length. The, off, the other thing that I want to do is um, extend the rhythm part. And I've already had a bit of a play with some of the rhythms. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick main five. Drop that in. That's a four bar loop. And then main eight. And that's going to be another four bar loop. So I've doubled the length of the rhythm. But we're going to have a different little bit of um, drums over here, just to make it a little bit more interesting. But this isn't a Groove Agent tutorial, so I'm not concentrating on that. Let's get these events trimmed. Now, there's a couple of different ways we can do it. We could zoom in, choose our scissors, cut the events up, choose our delete uh, eraser, delete them. That would work stick it all back together again. On that note, I'm just going to make these tracks a little bit bigger. If I performed that same operation, but snap to zero crossing was enabled, we wouldn't get the behavior that we wanted. You see now my scissors are tracking to zero crossings. They're trying to snap to the grid as much as they possibly can, but snap to zero crossing overrides the grid. And so if I was to cut using this feature, I wouldn't actually get the, uh, the result that I wanted. So make sure that snap to zero crossing isn't on when we're doing all of this stuff. Okay, so selecting the beginning and end of the events and cutting them up and deleting the stuff, that's, that's all absolutely fine, it'll work. But there's a better way of doing it. We have our locators, which are currently set to exactly bars 5 and 13. Those locators basically provide ready-made cut points that we can use. What we need to do is select the events we want to operate on and then go into Edit, Functions, Split Loop. And now if we zoom in, you can see that just the selected events have been split. See the keyboard line below hasn't been split, but the guitar parts have. Now there are actually three different split functions. That was split at loop. You could also split a cursor. So here we are on bar nine. And because I didn't uh, select the guitar events first, it's actually cut all four up. Let's undo that. And then we have a third kind of split as well. In order to show you this one, I need to choose my range tool and then select a zone using my range tool. And now, annoyingly, this op this uh, feature is in the range submenu split. And that splits the event up. So those are the three different split functions. Now I have them on shortcut keys. And if you go into key commands, here they are. Split at cursor, split loop, split range. But those are what I've got my um, expert keys pad set to. All right then, so I've already done my split loop. I can delete that, delete that. Don't forget, I've not permanently deleted anything. The audio behind is absolutely fine. We're going to fix it later. So now I've got eight bars of clean audio. I can select them and I can duplicate selected. But of course, that's generated some issues. Now at the beginning of the events, we don't have the nice clean um, introductions. That's no problem. Drag the events back out. And that's that fixed. Same at the end. Drag out to the maximum extent of our events and that's the end fixed. But the middle is trickier because where these two events meet, it's not absolutely perfect. Make them a bit bigger. Where one event hits another, you don't want what we have here where the second event isn't beginning at the zero point on the audio curve. 
that's going to create a really, really tiny little sample click. It's probably inaudible in this case, but that doesn't matter. We want to fix it. You know, this is a technical exercise. We want to learn how to do this stuff properly. So we're going to perform a crossfade between these two audio parts. We're going to smoothly transition from one to another. Let's concentrate just on the guitar arpeggio. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my left locator to 12, my right locator to 14. I'm going to solo this track. It's pretty much inaudible, to be absolutely honest with you. But nevertheless, you know, we're going to fix that and make it absolutely perfect. Now, I pretty much always do this by sight. I get an amount of audio up where that's a single beat from 13 to 13.2. So I can see a decent amount of the audio and then zoom in a little bit so that I can see the individual cycles. And now this is absolutely critical. You need to turn off snap and you need to turn on snap to zero crossing because what we're going to do is we're going to get Cubase to find two zero crossing points towards the end of this piece of audio. And you can see as I'm selecting, it's I'll just zoom in really far so you can see what it's doing. All of the selections that it's making are at zero crossing points. That's exactly what we want. And so we can choose a really tiny region in this audio and then press X. And that generates a crossfade between those two audio parts. So there are no longer any harsh jumps from one side to the other. So what has that crossfade done? Well, it's actually done two separate operations. I'm going to open the lanes up and I'm going to pick the second event up and drag it down. We need a grid relative on to do this. I need to drag it down onto a new lane. I had to engage grid relative to make sure it came down completely vertically. I could have pressed the control key, frankly. So now you can see what it's done. It's faded out event number one over the length of this range, and it's faded in event number two over the length of this range. What that means is that you have to have some audio overlap in order for there to be crossfade at all. Remember, we had that tiny little bit of extra audio at the beginning and end. That's what we're using. We're making use of that extra space to allow Cubase to smoothly transition between these two events. It's very rare that you want to do a hard cut at exactly zero and completely throw away all of your audio before for exactly this reason. Now, the fact that these two events, these two audio events have been elongated by Cubase has an unwanted, in my opinion, side effect. Let's have a look at our history. I'm going to undo that move to put them both on the same lane again. And can you see now we have a single operation called crossfade. You can remove crossfade on a track, but watch what happens if I do. So I'll select the event, so I'll select the event containing the crossfade, press shift X, and it's now removed that crossfade. So that's all very well and good. It's removed the crossfade, but it hasn't reduced the events back to their original size. They've still been left stretched. Have a look back in your history. Here's the remove fades, which isn't an undo of crossfade. It's only one of the two components of a crossfade. If you want to undo a crossfade completely, uh, control Z, you need to take the crossfade away itself. Let's bring it back. I'm trying to get into the habit of using the history window a little bit more so that you can see it in genuine practical use. And now I'm going to double click in the crossfade zone. That brings up a crossfade window. This is telling you what's happening in this crossfade. Just get rid of the lanes so that we can see it. If the window annoyingly disappears, you can just press X to bring it back. I can pick this curve up and bend it. And you can see the crossfade changing in the screen behind. And you can see that the fade in is always the opposite, the mirror image of the fade out. I can create new nodes to create complex crossfade curves. I can choose from presets, various parabolas, go back to my line. 
And then we've got stuff that I frankly never use up here. This, um, we've got spline interpolation, damped spline interpolation. It basically tells the crossfade algorithm whether to concentrate on the center or on the outside limits of the crossfading. It's, can, can you see how it's kind of bending more towards the node rather than the maximum extent? But to be absolutely honest with you, I very rarely use any of this stuff. I'm perfectly happy with linear crossfades for the most part. The 0.13 is the length of time. We can make it shorter or longer. I can also do it in the graphical interface. The box will disappear when I do this, but I can pick the crossfade up and shrink it like this. And there is also theoretically the ability to audition your crossfade, which is like a little mini audition loop. Um, it doesn't work on these audio parts. If I press play crossfade, I've not been able to get it to work. I think it's got something to do with my control room setup, but frankly, I don't really care. I never listen to just a crossfade because it's such a tiny amount of space. You can see that you can add pre-roll and post-roll to theoretically get, get you to the point where you can hear everything you need to hear. But I just use the locators. Zoom back in again quickly. Select my range tool. Now I'll do the crossfading on the guitar chord one. Turn the snap off. Select my range. Press X. That's perfect. Click zoom full so that we can see the whole song and get my track heights sorted. So let's just listen to an eight bar loop around that point with just rhythm and guitar. So there's the new rhythm. Okay, seems like a good place to stop. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Please click like if you did. I'll see you for the next one. Thanks a lot.